Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, webinar, the second in the BCCJ's COVID-19 Default to Action series. Uh, my name is Graham Davis. I'm the Senior Advisor to the uh, Chamber. Uh, and with me today, I'm delighted to welcome Jennifer Shinkai, and I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, Jennifer uh, in a minute. But first, I think we should probably go through a, a little bit of logistics. Um, we're doing an interactive webinar, so we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to hear your uh, thoughts and, and uh, questions, and you can use use that using the various um, buttons you can see at the bottom of your uh, screen, either the Q&A or the uh, chat function. Uh, we'll monitor those and we'll uh, try and chat, um, pick up on any uh, interesting questions or comments you might have. Uh, and finally, we do like to your, hear your ideas about um, the program. Uh, obviously, COVID has uh, come up um, and blindsided uh, every organization in the world. Um, we're trying to deal with it by seeing what's going on in the world and um, uh, trying to uh, help uh, companies make the best of what is undoubtedly a very difficult situation. We're going to try and keep the momentum we have in a lot of the regular events we have around diversity and inclusion, sustainable business, responsible business, uh, and about uh, technology. But obviously there's a need right now uh, for a, a series of uh, perhaps um, best practice or learning or advice uh, and ideas and, and support that we can offer to uh, the community that is the British Chamber of Commerce uh, in Japan. So if you've got any ideas of things you would like to hear uh, or ideas that you could perhaps uh, contribute to uh, a, a program, uh, then do please let us know. We'll try and work with you to uh, bring those uh, to, to the, the wider uh, audience. So after that little bit of uh, housekeeping, let me introduce uh, my guest today and tell you a little bit more about the program. Um, Jennifer Shinkai um, has been in Japan for over 20 years, um, working firstly in the uh, corporate world and, and moving very rapidly up uh, uh, the ladder of a very, very successful uh, company, which ended up being listed uh, in, uh, in, in Japan, and where she was a very senior uh, position. Um, she's actually branched out uh, on her own and runs her own um, training, uh, learning and development, marketing, sales operations. Um, uh, company uh, giving uh, advice uh, on change management and communications uh, and also uh, picking up on a lot of ideas around forward thinking uh, management and uh, entrepreneurial uh, ideas so she's uh, very well connected uh, and a very good person to have uh, with us today um, so uh, let's move on to the program but um, let's just focus on uh, COVID and, and what's happening uh, and specifically what happened to you, um, you know, very quickly when um, uh, COVID uh, happened. I know, you know you've got uh, young children, so you were, you've been hit by uh, business, by uh, the schools closing, et cetera, and by moving to uh, home working. Um, tell us a little bit more about um, you know, the last few weeks and, and you know, how things kicked off when um, COVID suddenly got serious here. Yes, didn't they indeed kick off? Well, it was more sort of fizzled out, actually, would be uh, my description of what happened. Um, you know, I, w I work in facilitation and coaching. I do a lot of work face to face with large groups. So obviously, uh, when things started to become more serious, um, all of this face to face training became cancelled. And on top of that as well, of course, you know, pipeline with so much uncertainty in the world, People are not really ready to commit to new training. Everybody is focused on you know, crisis management, keeping their people safe, skill, skill development, and these things is, is not kind of top of mind. And also, of course, you know, training is, is always one of those budgets that is, is the first to go. Uh, we batten down the hatches and we work on that. So short to midterm pipeline disappeared. And uh, so I decided, okay, what can I do? How can I make this time useful? I was very happy that I have um, a good number of executive coaching clients. Um, and I'm feeling very fortunate that at the end of last year, these opportunities started to come in. So I was up and running with them before uh, those things happened. But then I realized, oh my goodness, if I can't do face-to-face -face training, who am I? So people who know me, and there's a couple of people on the call, know that I talk a lot about Ikigai, about life purpose. And for me, being in the room with people and having that learning experience and facilitating that, it's what gets me out of bed in the morning. And I, in the, the notes when we were uh, talking about the questions, yeah, I, I got a little bit wobbly and, and I didn't really know what to do with myself. Um, and then I had this idea to launch an online community called Make March Matter. 
uh, which you can find on Facebook. Um, and there's a couple of members I see who are in the participants today. So thank you very much for joining and supporting me. I can't see your face, but I know you're there. And um, it's been great to think about how do I bring that ikigai, how do I bring the things which I see as my purpose into the work? But I launched this on, I think, Thursday, the 26th of February. And Friday, the 27th of February, Abisan announced that the schools were going to be closed. And I went, OK, now I don't have all the bandwidth I have, but how am I going to make this work? Um, and yeah, that's been, you know, the impact of business has been really about having to rethink what does online training look like? How do you connect when you can't connect face to face? And it's been such an amazing learning opportunity and a really great um, offer to the community um, as well. There's a lot of people who are really suffering right now, small business owners, and of course, you know, um, large businesses too. Let's talk about that. Um, we'll come back, obviously, to Make March Matter because it's a, you know, something you've, you've launched and I think it's a, a great idea. But just to sort of go back and this period of uncertainty, um, how long did it take you to mm. realise that the world had completely changed? And what sort of mood changes did you go through a, a you know, sort of psychological mm. effect of, of, of this? How long did it take you to sort of get a grip and, and reorient yourself? Um, being honest, I, I'm still doing that now. And I take every day as it comes. And, and you know, one of the things that um, I talk a lot about in workshops is around resilience, uh, being a muscle. Some people say, oh, I'm not a resilient person and it's a personality trait and you need to be an optimist. Um, I really believe that being resilient and having resilient and having the ability to bounce back is a practice um, and applying when you get new information, applying a forward thinking and as the BCCJ calls it, you know, the default to action mindset. But also, I think it's very important to take a moment and to be OK to, you know, grieve the loss of something that you thought you had and then now it's gone and that things have changed. So especially now, like make that space for yourself and then go, okay, now what do I do? Because as much as I wish I could do face-to-face -face training, it's not going to happen. As much as I'm sure that my clients in retail wish their stores would be flooded with people, it's not going to happen. The sales will not happen this weekend. So what do we do instead? Um, and I think some of that also comes as a couple of uh, Spartan race, uh, racers on the call um, and they'll know, you know, Unlike Graham, you're also um, a long distance runner, right? So in a marathon, you kind of know what you're going to expect. You know that at a certain distance, okay, I'm going to hit the wall. It's going to be hard. But in uh, Spartan races, they just throw random obstacles at you. And sometimes the terrain itself is an obstacle. And you just have to deal with it and get on with it. So I feel like my hobby is a great preparation for life. Um, so the more things that as an individual, you can put yourself into difficult and stretching situations, um, it really helps you as a business professional. In that sense, I, and you know, I, I see where you're coming from there, but m my experience of most organizations is they, they hit a crisis and they carry on doing what they've done before. They just try and do more of it. Whereas what you're saying is be agile, move on. Is that easier for an individual than an organization or can you apply these tips to an organization, do you think? Obviously, it's easier. I'm a solopreneur. You know, I don't have thousands of staff waiting for my decision. If I want to do something, I can do it. Of course, I ha I'm by its nature more agile, but with fewer resources and fewer um, things to fall back on. But I think that as individuals within organizations, the mindsets that you apply and the mindsets that you can bring as a leader um, to support your team who are going through this change, whether it's a crisis change or a different type of change, because this is happening all the time, um, those skill sets and those thought processes um, are relevant at the organizational level. And one of the things, you know, when I'm working in, in non-crisis times with clients, is really talking about the change curve and understanding that as a leader, where are you in terms of your acceptance and moving towards solutions? And then how are you bringing your people along that change curve as well? And accepting that everyone has their own pace. However, as a leader, you need to work on how can I shorten the time of that change curve? 
um, and how can I bring people into you know, defaulting to action and moving into action as soon as possible. Um, and when I worked in corporate too, you know, we would see, uh, as you mentioned, you know, we, we were purchased by a large Japanese company. Uh, we did a big rebrand. And um, sometimes we spend a lot of time in organizations um, blaming, shaming, complaining around what were the decisions um, and, and what led to this point. And that is fine to do, but you can't get stuck in that for too long because the purchase decision has been made. You're going to be bought. So what are you going to do with that? You know, sitting and complaining with your colleague, it's not going to change things. Um, so how do you want to control the situation? That's the way, um, the, the mindset that I talk about from a corporate perspective. Okay. Um, you know, is there a way that you can sort of have the uh, gripe, have the period of introspection, have the period of, you know, sort of, I, I wish this wasn't happening and bring that to an end and then move forward? Or is it kind of a process of doing that? Oh, yeah. You absolutely have to have it and honor it. It's an important part of the process. But it needs to be contained. And, you know, now we're going to put, a, 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 there's a full stop now um, and we're going to move on. So I've had, uh, you know, sessions and, and workshops where I've said, okay, everyone, you've got 15 minutes to complain about everything, which is, which sucks about your job, you hate about your manager, you don't like about your clients, let's get it all out there. And then we're gonna work on how, how are you gonna change that? And we're gonna work on finding solutions towards that and moving forwards, um, looking at what you do have rather than what you lack. So yeah, you absolutely have to have it. And especially in this time, um, because not only is there you know, the uncertainty of um, you know, the economy, there's realistic and very real health fears um, that people have and, and it's not business as usual and you have to as a leader give space for that and let and everybody will deal in a different way that's what's really fascinating I think looking at the people around me now is like everybody has their way to cope some people cope by sharing a lot of information on social media that makes them feel in control by being you know the deliverer of the news and sometimes it ends up being fake news and, and, and that is what it is. Um, and other people, you know, will withdraw from social media. Um, or some people want to talk about um, COVID all the time. Other people are always looking for um, a way to avoid it. And, and every reaction is okay. And you're going to see in your organization all types of reactions. And everything is just people's way of dealing um, with stress. So let's go on and talk about what you did specifically um you know if we like we we've got this grief period behind us and then, and then you're, you're sort of sitting there your business has sort of dried up um you, you you faced reality um you're sort of in your spartan mode what what did you do and what have you come up with and, and tell us a bit more about make march matter um so i think i just went into like this is an opportunity to experiment and pilot things. And because I've positioned everything as, I don't know what's going on. This is my first time to do it. It has freed me so much from being a perfectionist. So in the past, if I put something out, I would spend a long time like, is this good enough? What about this? What do I need to think about? What if no one signs up? What if they, too many people sign up? You know, they're like a champagne problem. So I had this inspiration for Make March Matter, maybe ooh, like in, in, the, in the shower. And then I spent the day, I just got into flow. It was amazing. Like I, I, I okay, th these are what it's gonna be about. This is how I'm gonna structure it. These three meetings in the week. So we have a kickoff meeting on Monday. And then on Wednesday, we have like a accountability power hour where we share our ideas. And then Friday, we have a week in review. Um, it's gonna happen. Um, we're just going to do it on Zoom. It's going to be really quick and easy for people to join. Um, we'll run it through Facebook. Um, so there's a community as well. And, um, you know, these are the, the sort of values and all of this stuff. And I just went into creation flow mode. And it was amazing, amazing change of energy. So I, I felt that once I had moved into making a decision and wanting to put something out, then that clarity um, really helped me to produce. 
Um, and I okay. think other things as well, just, I was just going to say about, you know, the whole thing about flexibility, of course, you know, clients are feeling bad. They want to postpone and just understanding that this, this is what it is. So how do you be gracious and generous and, um, just, and doing other things more about like encouraging people to have a virtual coffee because we can't meet up face to face. Um, let's have an online drinking session because we can, I'm actually communicating more with people now than I was before. It's quite, it's quite interesting. I'd like to hear more about that because I mean, one of the things that I'm struggling with, you know, looking at events for the BCCJ uh, is, you know, one of our regulars is the social event. And you're saying there's ways of actually doing social events on uh, online in a way. Yes. Yes, I think so. Um, so as you know, <laughs> and, and, and anyone who's involved in uh, Make March Matter also knows is that I have drunk the Zoom Kool-Aid. I think it's an amazing tool. I love, um, we're in a webinar right now, but in a meeting, you know, the ability to use a breakout room, um, to put people into smaller groups as well. Um, the fact that we can usually, in a meeting, we can see everybody's faces. And I'm, I'm very big on that. Like, you need to show your face. I know you're not because you're calling in from Wi-Fi and all of these things, but if we're um, in a meeting, show me your face. Show me your whole face. So a lot of people will have, like, their mouth is not in, please show me your whole face so that I can have as many cues as possible uh, for the communication that we can have. Um, you can get amazing conversations going on in the chat as well. Please feel free to use the chat if you're uh, on this call now. Um, like when people can comment on what's interesting, what's happening in the room, um, those types of things. So you can actually get um, really good engagement um, and really interesting conversations. It's a different style from a facilitation perspective. Um, you know, you have to be more aware of who's spoken and who hasn't. And I'm definitely more mindful about that as a facilitator online than maybe I am in the room. Like I'm, I'm literally taking a list. This person hasn't shared yet. This person has maybe spoken too much. So I'm not going to call on them um, much more than I do. So I think I'm more inclusive as a facilitator online. But if you're talking about having a social, um, I'm going to experiment with an online hanami this weekend, um, which hopefully will have a larger group of people. So I'm going to see like what are the options for small group networking, um, putting people into random breakout rooms and, and seeing what comes up when you're in those conversations. And I think it will be an interesting experiment to see, you know, when we're in a networking event, all of our biases come up and, and we go to someone who seems like maybe a safe option or someone who is, is like us. Um, but if I'm just randomly assigning you to a room uh, for five, 10 minutes to chat to someone, it could be quite fascinating what connections people make and uh, how they expand um, the diversity of the people they talk to. I mean, do you find it appeals to a certain type of personality? I'm thinking, you know, the more extroverts would put themselves out there and, and maybe, you know, a, a more introverted, quieter personality might get lost. What's your feeling on that? So in, in larger groups, then, yeah, like, so I think the people who are struggling with uh, self-isolation are extroverts like myself. So the people um, that I'm working with right now who are really enjoying it, of course, they are, are loving the fact to connect and to talk to people because now they're at home and, and not able to connect with their clients as they have been doing before. But I also think that um, from not just the work that I've done with Make March Matter, but when I've run other online communities and with, with different groups, um, I think that the, the chat is a very helpful um, way to bring out different conversations. Um, and also when I've worked with Japanese participants using points of view, which is a coaching tool from Israel that I use a lot face to face, but we've also been experimenting with online. Um, we did uh, work with 40 Japanese participants all online in small groups and the engagement was, was fantastic. And there were a lot of introverts on that call. So I've got a question actually, um, yes. if you're, if you're listening sure. from custom media or asking about, the environment for innovation. Um, you know, you've turned on a six months to implement uh, your idea. Um, what about in other other times, more normal times? Is it realistic? Um, is it something that corporates should be aiming for to you know such disruption? Um, when I talk, uh, you know, about 
innovation with my clients in a sort of business business as usual. Um, I, I, I think I'm just reading the question here. Is it only appropriate for right now? Um, I believe there's always an option to yeah turn on a sixpence and, and do things really quickly. Um, I think it's about reducing the perception of risk and reducing the scale. Um, so what is something that we can do, you know, for 10,000 yen? And how do we use that as a learning experience? So you can't innovate and suddenly ask someone to, you know, sponsor this for a million yen from an idea that you had in the shower. It's also unrealistic. But could we do a pilot for 10,000 yen now? So that would be my thing. I think, um, would it be considered unfocused? Perhaps. Um, but it depends what, what you're trying to do and, and how you're aligning that with other goals and if it's connected. Um, there's some great work on you know, piloting and uh, running prototypes with everything around design thinking. Um, so applying a design thinking mindset can be great. Yeah, I think this is a topic we could perhaps come back to in a, another uh, webinar. I mean, it strikes me every organization I've ever been in um, contact with or worked for is, is obsessed about innovation. I've been on endless courses talking about you know, becoming more innovative. Um, and then you go back to your office and do the same thing you were doing uh, the week before the uh, course. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, whereas this disruption does actually stimulate uh, potentially um, you know, great ideas and, and new things. Yes. Um, something else Catherine O'Connell has uh, written in about the, what benefits people get from uh, Make March Matter and, and that, how do you see it going forward? I mean, we're almost at the end of March now. Does it become Make April Matter or what, what happens? <laughs> I've, I've been playing with hashtags. Um, it will continue into April and especially, you know, Tokyo, we, we had the announcements. Um, how will that change after next week? I don't know. But I don't see um, for many of the people who are in that community that um, there's a lot of people who are in events and customer focused and lots of um, things where we're working with groups of people face to face. Um, in, in various areas. I don't see that those industries like coming back in April. Um, so it's definitely going to continue. Um, well, Catherine O'Connell, as you are one of the members, you can write your, your own thing. And there's a couple of other people who are uh, regular <laughs> joiners of Make March Matter. But the benefits which I've heard have been about having regular check-ins. Uh, so the, the structure of the three meetings a week, which are always at the same time, pretty much. Um, we've also been having guest sessions. So actually last week, Catherine came in and talked about um, uh, contracts. And uh, today, Jackie Steele um, came in and talked about uh, diversity and inclusion um, from a sort of democratic perspective. Um, so we're having these sort of different value adds. And um, yeah, we, it's just a place where it's okay to experiment, to try things, to share ideas. and. Um, People just have said, I'm just trying to think of some of the um, things people wrote to me this week about that it was, you know, it's been really inspiring. It's been great to see uh, what we can do to experiment. Um, just getting the energy um, from the group and, and being in that room um, virtually um, on the call um, is, is really helpful for a lot of people's motivation and mental health. And yes, it's definitely going to go into April and we'll talk about May at the end of April and see where we are. <laughs> well, then you'd be back to MMM, wouldn't It's you? very yeah. organic. Like, I don't have a plan. Like, someone asked me, like, what's the plan? I'm like, I don't have a plan. Um, I'm just seeing what happens um, with each day and if it's useful. Um, and I'll continue to do it as it seems useful. I was going to pick up on Jennifer Sekiguchi. Um, excellent question mm. here about some, some way to keep this uh, agility and resilience and innovation once the crisis settles down. Do you, have, do you have thoughts on that? I mean, we're nowhere near the end of the crisis yet, but <laughs> how, how do we keep this spirit of doing something new? I think it's in developing awareness and noticing what is coming up when you're given a piece of information. Um, and how are you thinking about what the opportunities are around that? So as I mentioned, it's like this muscle and if you're always going to the same perspective as business as usual, and this is how we did it last time, um, being able to catch yourself and saying, what might the opportunity be in this? And who have we not heard from? 
um, as you know, I, I work a lot um, talking about inclusion. Um, this is a great opportunity to hear different perspectives and different ways of doing things and making sure that in, in each sort of, in each situation, in each opportunity comes up that we are listening to different voices as well um, and getting their ideas because they're seeing the world in a, a different way. Yeah, I, I, I think that's good advice. I, think, I mean, I think there's probably a few other things around that um, uh, as well in terms of creating the space to actually have the, the time to think about it rather than just sort of get, getting on with the, the routine. I mean, a lot of managers fall into the trap of, of you know going back to the numbers or the uh, day job or the sales charts, et cetera, that they're used to rather than creating the space to think about you know, where things are going in the in the bigger picture, and and just yes. to ask a, a, another question, we're going to run out of time in a minute. But um, what do you think longer term? You've moved to this online community; it's going well. It's providing a real service to um, uh, a lot of people, and you know, I know it's it's it's, it's pretty popular and um, successful. Um, I don't know whether you can monetize it, but do you think? this crisis is going to make a permanent change to the way we work and you know the way meetings are run where the way we go or don't go to the office the way we do um, encourage remote working and video what, what are your early thoughts on that i i don't know um i really hope that it does uh alter working norms especially in japan and opens up uh, different ideas of you know, what professionalism might look like and how productive and effective you can be. You know, the biggest benefit that I found from, I'm, I'm in quite a lot of online communities uh, globally, and I get to talk to people and expand my network with people that I can't see sitting around the corner, you know, on the desk next to me or see around the corner. And it really helps me to have a better global view and see more opportunities. And so just as I am, was, when I was working in corporate, I was very mindful about how I'm building my network within the organization or within the local, net, the, the local community too. How are you building your network online? And um, I've been talking to a couple of people this week and saying, well, if you're feeling isolated, just have a coffee, have a virtual coffee with your colleague it's still work. It's okay. You would go to Starbucks. You can do that here. Um, but I'm, I'm very hopeful that there are some opportunities um, and more people have realized what can be achieved online. Um, and it, it's pushed things further forward. And there's a lot of jobs where people said, there's no way we can do this collaboration online. There's no way that this can be done. And people have gone, oh, hang on, when we're forced, somehow we've made this happen. Um, so I hope that organizations take the time to celebrate what they were able to shift and not sort of go, you know, back to exactly how we were, um, what are the benefits, what have we learned and how can we, um, replicate these? Because I think it's a huge tool for, um, expanding the talent pool, um, getting a different type of engagement. You know, you talked about, um, some people are extroverts and introverts when we spoke earlier and, you know, for, for some introverts coming, this, this, this is like the dream. I don't have to go to the office every day and I only have to call in on a couple of things. It's great. And the rest of the day, I don't need to listen to the chit chat and talking about what was on telly last night or any of that. I can actually really focus on my work. So there's a lot of um, benefits for, for different personality types as well, I believe. Um, we've reached the end of the allotted time. We've uh, run a minute over. So um, I think I'll call an end uh, to this now. And, and do you want to give any sort of final sum up of how you're feeling at the moment of you know going into or oh, COVID hit? Um, you had this sort of period of dealing with a, a sort of a blank order book, uh, and you've come up with something. I mean, how, how are you feeling now about what you, you've done and where you're going? Um, I'm really proud of what I've created um, very quickly, and I'm really touched. Um, by how useful it has been to so many people. And um, someone wrote in the, the Q and A over here, like it provides structure, accountability, motivation, and learning opportunities. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that I've been able to be useful in a time when I thought that I couldn't. Hang on, we've got some uh, noises off from uh, the drinks machine over there with my daughter. Oh goodness. Um, 
And I just encourage everyone to try to find some moments where, where can I see the opportunity in this? Where, where have I got a chance to do something differently? And just to play. I know it seems like it's such a serious and terrible time, but there's a, there's a chance because everything is changing and the rules are changing. So what could I do that I couldn't normally experiment with and people might be open for it and just start really small with no expectations um, and see what happens. I think that's a great place to leave it. I think this idea of taking a chance, taking a risk, starting small, seeing where it takes you. It's not applicable to everybody. A lot of people, you know, with very high cost bases or uh, ongoing, um, uh, you know, funding requirements are going to have to focus on uh, the revenue side. But, you know, there still ought to be space for everybody to try and make an opportunity out of what is uh, a major uh, crisis. I think, uh, Jennifer, you've shown uh, excellent ideas and uh, thoughts uh, and you know reasoning behind uh, what you've done. So thank you very much for your contribution. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who's uh, given us some comments uh, or uh, questions and who's listened. In. Um, we'll be doing more of these uh, webinars, hopefully on all sorts of different topics. Do please let us know what you would uh, like us to, um, uh, or who you would like us to uh, uh, host. Uh, and the kind of topics we could be um, uh, bringing to you. Um, but for now, I'm going to bring this to a close. Thank uh, Jennifer very much. Normally, I'd ask for a round of applause um, uh, from the audience. So give yourself a big pat on the back. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining. And uh, we'll hope to see you soon, uh, perhaps even in real life, if we get to um, uh, ever get back to um, uh, some Face kind of normality. This is but, still uh, real life. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you all very, very much indeed. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.